Hey guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Coffee Company podcast. Today I got an awesome story. This was one of the first Instagram lives I did, and I was just blown away that this gentleman would donate his time right after his live show that he does on YouTube to come talk to me. I think it was actually his first Instagram live, so you get to listen to it here, and it is Josh Pate. He does 247 Sports or 24-7 Sports, and it has become my go-to for college football news. I love the way that he presents uh, the storylines in college football, and it's just really entertaining and informative, and I like his point of view and his take on things. But he is going to share his story on how he got started, and I'm telling you, it is extremely inspirational, and it just gives me validation that I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because I know if I keep pushing, I will I will reach my goals and my dreams. So listen to this story with Josh Pate. You will get so much value from it, and please share it. Share this podcast. I want to grow this thing. I want it to be a community. I want to bring guests on with more stories like this. I think football has that just kind of has that X factor. It gives you that, it's that platform where you can, you can go through adverse situations and rise up and, and become a better person and, and provide inspiration to others. So listen to this podcast, enjoy it, leave a comment, follow me on Instagram at Gridiron Coffee Company, and let me know that you listen to it. I would like to hear your take on it. So here's Josh Pate. And, um, I've been following your show. I usually catch the uh, replay, like in the mornings before I go to go to work. But um, I watched your live show tonight, and um, uh, it was just a great show, man. I mean, I I can't imagine how much time you put in to uh, get to get it, to gather all the information. It's, it's really fascinating to me. Um, I really don't watch. I used to watch like Sports Center every morning. It was like my my routine. I'd wake up. Just see what's going on in the sports world. And I, I don't do that anymore. I, I've kind of really just gotten away from ESPN for the most part. And I watch college game day once the football seasons, you know, get going. But um, I love the way that you bring college football into it. You, you kind of encompass everything, like nationwide. But um, I'm from I'm from Georgia. I live in Georgia. So you know, you know as good as I do. Like around here, it's you know, it's kind of SEC country. Like, um, for the most part, and you do you do a great job of hitting up all the schools, and it's it's always I feel like it's unbiased, and um, I just I, I like the reports you do and the uh, the feedback you give on each team. So thank you again for coming on. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, man. No problem. Now here's the problem. Well, you tell me if it's a problem. So the name of the channel is what your channel, not mine. Gr- uh, Gridiron Coffee Company. Okay, so what do we think about this? <laughs> Cold brew. Uh, I'm a hot coffee drinker, or is that? You? <laughs> this is room temperature. I mean, so it's it's definitely not cold brew. But this stuff, this is what I, you know, I don't drink. So in lieu of actual alcohol, this is what I throw down right after a show, and I play uh, a song called "Holding Back the Years" by Simply Red in our studio or in our office, which is like empty right now. So that's my post game routine. Um, <laughs> except I'm on Instagram Live right now, so. That's uh, I got chewed gum here. That's I'm probably going to put back in my mouth after we get done. So, <laughs> so what's your current like? So what, when would you go to bed tonight? Like, what do you think? Two, probably, probably two or three. Two or three. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm a school teacher, so um, just to kind of tell you about me, I, I've I've been football's the reason I got into education for the most part. I I played football in Macon, Georgia, for Robert Davis. I don't, um. He was a legendary coach in, in Georgia. Passed away last year, actually. High school football, and I knew I wanted to do something to make a living with the sport. I uh, went to Valdosta State, got a uh, degree in health and physical education, and I uh, wanted to be a football coach. And that's that's what I'm – I'm a PE teacher, football coach. And this summer I, I had a um, – I just had something kind of grip the hold of me, and I was like, you know, I want to do something big. Like, I, I want to find a way where I can possibly give back or maybe provide opportunities for struggling programs to fundraise or maybe some 
create some sort of grant. I don't know, but I'm, I love coffee. <laughs> like, I don't drink either. And so like I wake up every morning and I want to drink coffee. It's like what I look forward to each morning. And I was like, gridiron coffee. I was like, oh my God, in my brain, I'm just, I'm a really creative person. I, um, I kind of, you started on YouTube, correct? Or you kind of. Started on radio, TV, then went to YouTube. So I kind of like threw I, it in yeah. what a normal person would do. Well, I, I have a YouTube channel also, and, um, and it really has nothing to do with sports, but mostly like fitness. But um, so I have like a really creative side of me to do things, and my brain was just rolling. I was like, oh my God, I got so many ideas with this, and I want to like build a community and do things like this. And um, but first, I would really like to uh, hear how did you get into doing what you're doing? How much time do you have? In a 20 minute, uh, <laughs> if you can condense it to 20 minutes. Okay, so <laughs> I, um, 10 years ago ish, I was working in a fabric warehouse down in Columbus, Georgia. And so all I do all day is listen to talk radio. At the time, I mean, podcasting was around, but it was not, it didn't proliferate nearly and saturate the market nearly to the degree it does now. So it was sports talk radio for me. It had a little teal transistor. It was very old, but I took it all around that sample department in the warehouse and stuff. So, I mean, of course I knew I wanted to do that, but I was in this, I was in this kind of space. It was kind of a no man's land. It was, you know, I didn't grow up broke, so I didn't have that hunger ingrained in me that, you know, it's me against the world. But I also, I didn't grow up rich, so I certainly was never placed on third base. I think there are millions of people out there. This is one of the most underserved markets in our society of people that, you know, they, they don't quite have their back against the wall, but they also don't quite have advantage and they just float. I was floating for, for a good portion of my early twenties. I was floating. And so I, um, I could never have answered the question at that point, who are you? Could not have answered. I could have told you my name, could have told you all the stuff in my driver's license, but I couldn't have told you who I was. I could not have opened myself up and told you, here are my passions. Here's where my talent intersects with those. Here's where I see myself giving back to society, but also creating a professional lane for myself. Well, slowly that started to evolve a little bit. And I started to realize, man, I listen to this talk radio every day. I'd love to do it. I think I have the God-given ability enough to at least fool people into thinking I can do it, if nothing else. And so I bothered the, the PD, the program director down at the ESPN radio affiliate in Columbus until he let me come in there and observe. And then one day it was a situation where someone can't be there. Can you fill in on like a five minutes notice? And I did it. Uh, I stayed on air for like two years. And I got a call one day, which just goes to show you, you're always interviewing. In our business, you're always interviewing. Forget your resume, forget your reel. You're always interviewing when you least suspect. I get a call from a general manager that was at the time running a TV station down there in Columbus, the, the NBC affiliate, WLTZ. And he said, you don't know me, you've never met me. Don't worry about that. But my sales department, my sales GM and I, like, we want to do a college football show. And I listen to you every day driving home. We've lived with you for about a month. We want to put you in the chair. Have you ever done TV? No. Okay, well, don't worry about that. Just come do it anyway. Oh, and by the way, last minute, I want you to be the sports anchor here and the sports director too. So am I qualified for any of this? Of course not. But I took the jobs anyway because it's not my fault they offered it. And so I go and I get in the TV world, and slowly they give me the ability to host my own college football show. And that was great for a couple of years. Here's the problem. I don't own it. And ultimately, I want to own it. I'm very grateful for the opportunity, eternally grateful for the opportunity. But – when you are providing a service for someone, they sort of want to dictate the way it goes, which is totally fair. And so I wanted to have full creative control. Don't we all? Well, I wanted to have that. And so it came time a few years in for my contract to come up. I had elevated to news anchor. I was doing the morning news there, uh, but I wanted to do my own show and I was being blocked from doing that. And so the last day our contract negotiations had stalled, I was just going to go my separate way. And the last day, 24 hours before my contract's going to be over. I get called in with the news director and with the general manager. And the GM, I love the dude. I still talk to him to this day. He says, what, what, what do you have? Like, what, what do you have lined up? Are you really? I mean, you seem confident. You just want to walk away. And I didn't have anything lined up. What I was going to do is go start a YouTube channel. That's what I was going to do. I was, I was very confident in the vision I had. Just needed mm -hmm. someone to like it. So we arrived at sort of compromise that I would work 1099. I would independent contract their news for them. 
so the viewer sees the same thing. I keep anchoring the news, but I'm going to make far less. I'm not going to be a salaried employee, but the trade-off is you give me this new studio and you give me that control room for one hour, three nights a week, and no questions asked. Oh, I'll wow. Anything I want to. That's like a gold mine. Sure was. They didn't realize it, I don't think, but it was. And so I got access to a full working television station to build a YouTube channel with. And so I did it, and we started doing largely what you see me do now. It started with the Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday format, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. I always wanted to be live. I never wanted anything to be canned. I hate, hate working pre-recorded. It's just a giant safety net under you. You never operate the same way if you're not live. So we did it. Uh, we trial and errored it. We learned the model, and when I say perfected the model, the one that works for us, um, I was just like you when you were talking a few minutes ago and you said, I don't really watch a lot of mainstream sports coverage anymore, sports news and commentary coverage, because it never spoke to me. It did not speak to me anymore. The commentary was very manufactured, yeah, very formulaic. There was no authenticity. I did not think someone in a studio 1,500 miles to the Northeast understood the Southern football fam. Yeah. It's a massive market. It's massively underserved. And so I knew we could utilize new media to reach it. And so... It's not an overnight thing, but it's very much a compounding hockey stick effect kind of thing. And so a couple of years in, I get another call, total stranger, sent it to voicemail. And the voicemail said, hey, this is Shannon Terry. I'm the CEO of 24-7 Sports. I knew who it was. And so I called him back, and Shannon said, I don't even know what I want you to do. I just know I want to hire you, and I know I want you to come here and do whatever you're going to do for us. And so I signed with 24-7 and CBS last January came up here last January and walked in and was essentially given the keys to this place to do what whatever I creatively <laughs> wanted to do. And um, to this date, no one's gotten in the way. I've, I have not publicized this, but I've signed one extension with this place already. Um, I mean, financially, they do more for me than I thought I'd get done for myself in 10 lifetimes. But it's, I mean, I wear the same shirt every day. It's not like I'm flaunting. <laughs> but it's creative control. And the brand of CBS and 24-7 as your tailwind, resource-wise, to get you whatever you need, that means the world. Because that's a big media organization giving you way more creative control than they pretty much get, give anyone. So that's how I got here in the very condensed 20-ish minute version. Well, I, th I think you kind of hit it on the head. Cause the other day you were saying about the Auburn coach, how he's not from around here and that he's going to have to kind of – get acquainted with the media and kind of, I guess, maybe pull them on his side just so that, because they could really either crush him or, you know, help, help him in a, in a lot of ways. So, and, you know, you know, as well as I do, like football here is kind of like a religion. And, mm -hmm. and so you, you do need that voice. Like, and I, I like the way you put it. And you don't just talk Southern football. You do t conclude like programs around the country and it's, you know, it's, it's informative because, you know, people like me, I want to know what's going on. And I don't want to, I don't want it to be heavy Oregon all the time or USC all the time, but I, I'd like to know what they're doing. Um, a lot of times with, with me, just, I'm, I'm currently a middle school football coach. Um, uh, and so you, you start getting, I know when I coached varsity football, a lot of times it was like, you just get kind of zoned in on your team. You're just the players you coach, and you kind of isolate. You don't know what's going on around. So I, I like the way I can, I can tune in on your channel on YouTube, and titles there. I know what I'm going to get when I when I click on it. What information I'm going to get, and it's just, you know, even even if it's just I got you in the background listening. You know what I'm saying? It's just well, that's good. I really enjoy your show. Even back in the day, Alex, I see your comment. It's coming, buddy. So even back in the day. When we originally formulated the show, I formulated it to transition seamlessly to a podcast. Well, we could have a visual element. We could do it in studio. We'd have all these fancy cameras and whatnot and graphics. But um, I want that show to lose nothing in terms of viability if you're listening to it only. If I yeah. told you the visual element, I want all of the properties to still be in place. And I think we accomplished that yes. to as much a degree as we can. Yeah, you do a great job. And... Um... If you DM me your address, I will, I will I will hook you up with some hot coffee for them. Good, because I'm out of this. I mean, <laughs> this is done. <laughs> and I'll throw in a sticker too. <laughs> so, are you from Georgia or where, where are you originally from? Yeah, Columbus. 
You are from Columbus? Okay. Uh, I'm from Macon. I live right up the road. I am <laughs> um, from north of Columbus. I am from okay. Are you from Lumpkin by chance? I had no. my roommate in college had a, uh, some people from Lumpkin, and we used to go there back I'm, in the day. <laughs> I'm not from Lumpkin. Okay. <laughs> um, I have one more question. So how do you fit in the Outer Banks and all this work you do? <laughs> Beats me. <laughs> I just but I will say this. <laughs> I, it, after a while, let me think. I mean, I, I got to be careful here. So, so after a while, uh, people mistaking me for the dude who who makes up. I, I I stopped trying to swim against the stream, and I just started going with the stream. And so I um I've been having some fun with that. But here's the whole thing: I didn't watch the show initially. I knew the guy's name was my name, and I occasionally got people in my inbox giving me all kinds of different plot lines, <laughs> suggestions. But I figured, okay, well, this will pass. Well, then when they announced on Netflix season two is right around the corner, it really ramped up tenfold. So I figured this is not going to stop. I should go watch this season one. Well, the problem is I watched it. I liked it. I got into it. Then I go back in the inbox and start re-scrolling through all of these DMs. And I said, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Hate that idea. Started interacting with some of these people. And <laughs> oh my God. sudden, you get a little bit too far down the rabbit hole to admit, like, I can't at this point tell them I'm not the guy. And, I mean, is it identity theft? Or what? We, is what felonious? Is this right or wrong? Is it just a joke? I still don't know. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you know, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to hear your story, man. That was very, really, that was inspiring. And it kind of hearing you talk about the way you jumped into, um, you know, media and the sports world, it's really, it kind of gives me affirmation that, you know, this is what I want. I want to do. I want to carry on what I'm doing with gridiron coffee and, and, uh, make it a platform for, you know, people that have coaches or fans of football, you know, uh, football is a great game and it, I believe it changes lives and brings people together. So, uh, Josh, I, I don't want to keep too much of your time, but I just I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. All right, man. You too. Later.